Good everyone, welcome to this video and today we have a subscriber replay sent to by Jane Porn3 and today he's in his, well, by the time this video comes out I'd have obviously had the 264 ready to go and done a first flight in it, maybe got it mostly spaded, but I've had to push some things back as I've already mentioned and um, well now that this thing's at 3.7 I think it might actually be bearable to actually play. So the Messerschmitt 264, well in fact, I won't blabber in the hangar, but I'll go briefly over what it was. It was essentially a 400 heavy bomber to fight back at the Allies, so to speak, but it didn't work out very well. I'll go into more about the project that spawned this aircraft shortly, once we get into the actual battle. So we're powered by four Junkers Juma 213Es, which I think are the same ones on the J Ju-288. And this thing's actually pretty well armed. You get a front-facing 30mm machine gun, which, to be honest, isn't really that well of a defensive armament. But it's the top turrets. Both of these top turrets are 20mm caliber guns. These small hatches here, they're 13 millimeters. And down here, you have a 20mm. So overall, this thing's looking pretty well defensively armed. I mean, you can get two 20mm firing, as well as a 13mm machine gun firing, if the enemy is unfortunate enough to come from either the left or the right-hand side of the aircraft. With decent speed and a good stock bomb load of 9250kg bombs, which is enough for one and a half bases, you're off to a pretty good start overall in terms of development of this, well, getting this thing spaded. Obviously by the time this replay comes out, well this video comes out, I would have gotten the 264. Obviously this won't be a two per day, this will be pushed back a bit, and obviously the 264 first flight will come after this. The thing is though is that um, I don't want to get spam with replays, and I don't really want to use so many replays early on into 1.89 because obviously I've got well I'll obviously have live flights to do for the Talisman series, subscriber requests, I've got um got one from It's Phillips for the I-15 Biz which is a pretty fun aircraft but anyway let's blabbering about that and let's jump right in so this was James first battle in the 264 and if mine goes as well as this I will be happy let's just say that now it is quite a long replay but well not a long replay by normal standards but there is a bit quite a large amount of dead zone this is where I'm going to blabber about the America project or the America bomber project so once James spawns in I will go on about it Okay, any second now, and here we are, here she is, the mighty Messerschmitt 264. And obviously you'd have seen my um, minor ASMR sort of related video on this thing. I just sat in silence for a couple of minutes and just let the plane do the work. It is a fantastically soothing aircraft. Now Jane makes an, an America joke, well an America bomber joke here. Mate, I don't even think this thing had a fuel load in real life to make it there. It was tested, but that's pretty much it. So the Messerschmitt 264 was one of the main bomb well, developments made to essentially bomb America. That was the main purpose. They wanted to strike fear into the Allies by sending such a large plane with good defensive armament. Obviously no fighter would ever escort these things. These things would have had to fly on, on their own in formation. But these aircraft were designed to fly all the way to the US of A, bomb them, I think it was New York was their target, and fly all the way back to Germany and hope they don't get intercepted by P-51 Mustangs and things like that. The servicing on this aircraft would meant that it would be able to be captured by the P-51 Mustangs, but the Mustangs would have to be up first. The Mustang didn't have the climb rate to get to this thing before it could bomb and get out. They would have also had to use P-38 Lightnings and whatever it could really muster really. Um, so the American Project well, Bomber Project had several, um, shall we say, um, 
ideas brought up. Obviously, the Messerschmitt 264 was one of them. I think there was the Ju390 was the one of them. That had six engines, which is basically BV level. Um, plane theoretically could carry 13.2 tons of bombs, and well, everyone was complaining about this thing not having that payload. Obviously, James is looking around the aircraft here. Gorkin probably get an a wearable boner. Um, he always does when it comes to German aircraft. He jumped in his TA-154 and grown this thing out instantly, pretty much. I, unfortunately, was out with a couple of friends, so obviously I could not grind the aircraft yet. I've, um, I've obviously done the Euro 2002. I will be working on grinding this aircraft with the D5 Stuka. But um, the American Bomber Project, well, this, the nose of this thing looks strangely like a B-29. So, it's just such a soothing aircraft, because obviously... It's got a lot going for it. It's got armament, it's got decent bomb load of up to four tons. And, well, in fact, the final payload, which is eight two two Satans, which are 1800 kilogram, and three 250s, that will push it up to just over 4,000 kilograms. Which, for a battle rate 3.7 heavy, is nothing to be sneezed at. With it having one more cannon, but obviously less machine guns than the BV, and with it being able to climb reasonably well, I think you'll be seeing a lot more of these things. This will be the poor man's BV-8, or BV-238, basically. That's how I see it. Now, towards the end of the battle, James is going to make a mistake, and this is going to cost him his aircraft. But, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, obviously, there's a pilot here at a P-3. If I was climbing with him, and... I saw a ME264, I'd probably just turn around and go to base, to be truthfully honest. Um, James is too busy, again, gawking at the bomb bay of this thing. Obviously this aircraft is absolutely massive, we are talking, I think it's 42 meter wingspan, which is absolutely insane. Um, obviously four engines, lots of gunner positions, I don't know why he's firing here, probably just test where he defensive angles are. You really should have done that in test flight, mate, but whatever. But so far I've been looking forward to seeing aircraft like this. Obviously, it was a prototype and I'm not the biggest fan of prototypes, neither is the digital time traveller. But I don't mind seeing them if they could compete. Or if they weren't too broken, because obviously this aircraft is not overpowered. I can tell you that right now. This thing is not overpowered. Its bomb load is pretty good. It can take out two bases and damage a third with the maximum payload. Obviously, with this payload, you'll have enough to take out one base and half another. So theoretically, two T two sixty fours could level um, all, all three bases. Won't be able to hit the airfield, but with the stock payload, you could do it. With the fully graded payload, two 264s can take out all three bases and still have some left of the runway, with one carrying a Satan. So obviously James drops six bombs, he shot the bomb bay immediately. And he now banks this giant beast over. The elevator authority isn't as good when I tested it, but the raw rate for a four engine heavy is actually pretty dang good. I'm not gonna lie. Now at this point, um, James has picked up a tail in the form of a I-185 M82, which I believe that was a 1943 to 1944 prototype of a fighter, it didn't really do very well. So essentially, it's prototype versus prototype. Obviously James firing early to basically get him to sod off, which, I mean he's almost a mile away, I think you're wasting ammo at this point dude. So. I was fired, but he's going to keep trying to get this guy to pester off. Of course, even though the Russian fighter really isn't designed for high altitude performance, it's apparently catching a ME-264 at 21,000 feet. But, guys your logic. So now James opens up his bomb bay, ready to go again. Obviously, he will not kill this base, but he will be able to damage it. The he can take out half the base. Now at this point he takes a hit to engine number two. The Iron 85 for some reason is pulling up a vertical for him and spraying ammo into the wings. 
But this seems actually quite a tough aircraft. I didn't think it'd be this tough. But there you can see the elevator stabilizer is taking a hit. The engine number three, well, engine number two is taking a hit. Um, the overall wing air, well, the wing area is taking a bit of damage, but this thing just doesn't care. It is a tough aircraft. Obviously, James bombs are out. That's him over and done with in terms of payload, but this I-185 just doesn't want to sod off. I, I honestly don't know why he's just been chasing 264s all day. As I said in the Spade Impressions for the um, RE2002, it seems everyone wants to come after the new kid on the block. At this point, however, the I-185 has been crippled. He's lost part of his wing. And, well, he's soon going to be James' first victim. And there we go. James Bond's... Well, I nearly said James Bond then. James' bombs have hit the target. The funny thing is, my exam involves um, James Bond. <laughs> Obviously, this will come out way after my exam. And Lanza is now moaning in chat about the 264. It is not overpowered. I don't know what he's saying, so if anyone who can translate Russian knows what he's saying, then that'd be helpful. Because I'd love to know. Now, unfortunately, at this point, James has had what's known to trade as parental intervenes into his battle. So we are going to skip ahead a bit more to save my voice. I've done quite a bit today, as you can imagine. I've had loads of replays to get through. I've had this. I've had a couple of other things. So yeah, I've been, I've been a bit of a busy boy, but I don't mind. And at this point, James comes back to his 20mm firing. And I'll put it back to one time speed, and it turns out a C205 Series 1 has actually jumped in on its tail. However, as the replay will not show, James is taking heavy engine damage. Um, obviously, engine number two is not doing hot. Um, the rest of the engine's cooling systems are not doing great either. And overall, this thing is just a ticking time bomb at the moment. The 264 can fly reasonably fine with just two engines on one wing gone. But it's when you lose three is when you start to have an issue. Now the 205, I will admit, he does a perfect interception here. He's doing it how he should, but he's sitting in front of the 20mm. He's just trying to get himself shot down, it would seem. He's doing some excellent maneuvers to try and shake off James Gunnery, so... Crap Ivnik, or ca crap Ivnik, you're doing the right thing here, pal, but at the end of the day, you just... You come into the defensive fire of 20mm cannon, which, as he's about to find out, is bloody well dangerous. Fair enough, James Gunnery could be better. But, um, and also stock belts, that's one thing to take into account as well. Um, yeah. So at this point, James is about to lose his engine 1 and engine 2, which are about to start spluttering to a halt any moment now. Um, yeah, James str well, struggling to keep this aircraft airborne. Obviously, you can tell that engine 1 and engine 2 are not doing very well because they're spinning slightly slower than the other engines. Crappin Nick goes for the other engine. He scores a couple of hits to engine 4. And, well, right now... Hang on, that's pause. James has lost a couple of gunners. There goes engine 1. Engine 1 has just failed. And I believe right now, engine 2 is about to fail as well. And there we go, engine 2 has failed, so James is now on two engines. The 264 can fly with two engines. However, James has what I believe to be a water leak in engine number 4 from the MC205. And, well, as you can see, this thing is just taking an absolute beating. I have no idea how this thing is still flying. But it's quite clear when they were making the America Bomber project, they just said, 
make this thing as durable as possible because you'll have to fight Mustangs. Give it some of the best armament at its battle rating, clearly. At this point, there is actually an A6M2 Mod 11 following James at the moment, but he isn't going to engage. At this point, however, James is going to have to start a descent to try to get this thing on a runway. I think it's actually an oil leak that he has, because if it was a water leak, his other engine would have failed by now. I'm just skipping ahead to James' fatal error. And here's his fatal error. Now, the first is what he's doing here, ladies and gentlemen, is he's doing a descending spiral. Common tactic. Um, it's a very effective tactic if you're in a big four engine heavy bomber like this. On two engines, you'd have no issue doing two rotations. But it's the fact that he does quite well. He could do two engine, uh, or two engines, two rotations. That's fine. But it's quite clear to me that James didn't really test this thing. What it could do, obviously, you can. The way I shut down engines is I bind keyboard binds to shut down manually the engines, so they'll come to a stop just like his engines have come to here. Obviously, if he goes for another climb or descending spiral, he will simply hit that mountain. He will not have the engine power to get over. And I can already hear that his throttle is a little bit low. And this is at this point that I thought he was going to land it. Obviously, he's coming in. He's on two engines. He's got heavy wing damage. He's missing a flap, which doesn't help his situation. Um... I'm not sure about his landing gear, but I'm guessing that shot to shit as well. But, um... It is around about this point where James starts to make a bit of a mistake. Obviously, first of all, he's coming in too high. That's his first mistake. Second of all, he clearly has the engines uh, next to no throttle, as we can listen. It's at this point where he starts to crank it up a bit, but this is the fatal error. He goes for another descending turn, and he turns towards the two dead engines. First rule of aviation, if you've got a dead engine, you don't turn towards it. Because that could potentially lead to a flat spin, due to the overabundance of thrust on the other two engines. I've already seen in the hangar, this thing's got a boatload of power. But at this point though, James' problems have just gotten even worse. Engine 3 has just failed. Not sure why, but Engine 4 isn't doing hot either. But this is the fatal mistake that James did. He should have come in with a more aggressive dive angle, throttled back to zero, dropped the landing gear and things like that, and attempted to land on just two engines. However, now, he is having to land on just one engine. He's obviously dropping the landing gear. Personally, dude, I wouldn't have even dropped the landing gear, because now you're just increasing your speed even further. And it's quite clear to me he doesn't have the throttle at very high power, because... Well, it's at this point, James thinking, Fuck, I need power, but one engine just ain't enough. With three engines dead, he needed full power. And that is the end of it. On the plus side, though, James' team, I believe, did win this game. So he got off to a good start spading this thing. I know, he's actually spading. But like I said, though, dude, you could have gotten away with this landing, but he just did two critical mistakes here. I know, obviously, everyone makes mistakes. But I think it was a good idea for me to point out your mistakes, because then I could help fellow 264 pilots. Now I'll know myself for when I unlock this thing. Obviously, I'll do that soon. Um, that the plane clearly has a problem with landing with just two engines, and clearly with three go engines gone, it just didn't like your low-speed landing attempt. As I mentioned, a higher speed, a more aggressive dive angle, no landing gear would probably have been your best bet, but it's a learning curve. Every new aircraft is a learning curve in War Thunder.
Jets are a learning curve. Zeros are a learning curve. Um, Spitfires are a learning curve. And clearly, this thing is a learning curve. But hey, we all, we all, well, the word I should really be using here is you win some, you lose some. And clearly, James lost some. But he did have a decent game nonetheless. So I hope you enjoyed today's subscriber replay on the mighty Messerschmitt 264. I will obviously work on getting this thing myself. And I will catch you all on the next one. If you've got any replays you want to send to me, do put them in the email address below. And if you're new here, do click like and subscribe because I always like seeing new people join the channel. Catch you all on the next one.